All right, Sean, we are on Desert Oasis with Kothanluk up 2-0 over the little one. And we just saw the little one kind of open up really, really strong on uh, Steps of War. But then he kind of went for this Infestor heavy army. And I think Kothanluk maybe knew that he was possibly going to do this. And we just saw some really, really aggressive play from Kothanluk. And he just easily demolished all of the little one's forces, taking out his natural expansion. We are now on Desert Oasis, which in the in the past we've seen some really unique strategies so coming from the little one do you think we're going to see an even uniquer strategy from him <laughs> on this map uh, yeah i think the uniqueness will be at the maximum in this game uh, <laughs> as he's actually playing protoss this time so i think he'll be a lot more comfortable getting his worst race out of the way because that is one of the issues that you'll have playing random with nine matchups and what is it, eight, nine maps now for StarCraft II, is that occasionally you'll have a strategy that's good on one map and not so good on others. That Zergling Infestor strategy works great on a map like Metalopolis, Metalopolis, excuse me, um, one of those bigger maps, but on a map like Steps of War, you can lose to one of those early bussins. So I would just probably point to a lack of experience in the matchup, but right now we do have him playing Protoss on Desert Oasis, Colossi, brutal on this map. Um, looks like we don't see any sort of eight racks, nine racks, even a seven racks fast Reaper rush. Also incredibly strong on this map. Uh, so I'm delighted to hopefully see another kick-ass game similar to the ones that we've had on Desert Oasis in the past. Now we do see the little one sending out this probe a little bit early. It uh, looks like he is going to be gatewaying on 11, I think. Yeah, we okay, there is the gateway, so thanks for making me look smart. We do see this Rax going down in Kathanluk's base. Probably the, the, the most standard stuff that you'll be seeing from Kathanluk is that you have seen in the past two games. He is going to be sending this next SCV out of his command center to that uh, Vespian geyser, so he's going to be dropping down that refinery. And... Uh, or going back over the little one's base, he is not using uh, the chrono boost of his gateway there on his peons. Kind of wondering if that's a blunder or if he's actually saving it for something uh, something else down the line. Wouldn't be surprised. Oh, well, there's a chrono boost right there. Oh, whoopsie daisy. It looks like perhaps he ended up forgetting it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was just a little bit more of uh, rearranging going on. A lot of times you want to be building a probe before you end up throwing down any chrono boost. Um, because a lot of the timing gets screwed up if you're just non-stop chrono boosting. You'll get a ton of probes out, but if, for instance, you're trying to early gateway and get out a very early cybernetics core, which is very clearly looks like little one's trying to do... Oh, nope, there the pylon goes down. Uh, I really think he should have gotten a cybernetics core, but... Um, yeah, now, at this point, I'd be like, yeah, it was a mistake not to be chrono boosting earlier on. I mean, um, probably just getting a little bit thrown off, you know, as he is down 0-2, but... Either way, Kathan Luck playing pretty normally, uh, getting a tech lab up very quickly on the barracks. That's a little bit unusual. Um, and I just want to point out a key piece of terrain for the little one. Look at his geysers in his main and move off to the right. You'll see this little um, peninsula where tanks can actually shoot at these assimilators. Banshees can shoot at the assimilators. Very important to keep those assimilators alive. So it's a giant concern for both players protecting their assimilators. I'm curious if we're going to see that sort of abuse on this map. We actually do see Kathanluk spawning that Marine first before actually getting the Reaper, possibly trying to uh, make sure his opponent doesn't know that he's opening Reapers. But uh, going back over in the Little One's base, we do see that Cybernetics core. We probably will see see him spawning a Stalker here out of this gateway. There's a Stalker. He's going to be Chrono boosting that. So it looks like he does uh, kind of realize that uh, some... Um, wow, as I forget the unit name, <laughs> some Reapers are going to be heading towards his base. <laughs> he is only spawning one, though, then he's going to be opting for that Marauder, but he's supply capped. Okay, some good timing there. He's also researching that Concussive Shells rather wow. rather early. Uh, we do see a pylon there in the little one's base, a little bit farther north. That's kind of an interesting pylon placement. I wonder if he's going to be hiding some tech up there. We do see a probe in place. He is, looks like he's saving up for 200, 200. And there is the robotics facility. A little bit of an interesting building placement or unorthodox building placement from the little one right now. Oh, and here comes Cathon Lux Reaper coming up the wrong side. I mean, I really think this pylon at the top was there to spot any sort of Reaper coming in. But instead, the little one has to pull all his probes way back this reaper shouldn't have gotten any kills yet has taken three and has stopped his opponent from mining for quite some time we do see the expansion going down for kathon luck explaining why he opted to get those concussive shells so quickly so we can deal with any sort of rush but of course no rush coming anytime soon only a robo bay almost certainly going to be some sort of colossi coming out soon but uh-oh with that reaper harass two in the gas at little one's main and this is just like my lifelong pet peeve of players in this game. <laughs> For some reason, people just seem to end up with two in the gas one way or the other. So now I always am just spamming in my game to make sure nothing stupid's happening. And there's a robotics facility. Colossi, here we come. 
Now we do see a little bit of an aggressive play right now as Kathomlak is sending these uh, looks like to be three Marauders and one Marine across the map. He does has an does have an SCV at this uh, left Zelnaga Watchtower, so we might see that come down and possibly put down a bunker there outside of uh, Little One's base. Little One kind of has one Sentry, one Zealot, now researching a Warp Prism. I wonder if we're going to be seeing the Colossi drop that we've seen him do in recent yes, games. Please. I cannot wait to see any sort of Colossus drop. I think I think he'll be able to hold this off pretty easily with the sentry here. If any aggression does end up coming, he can, you know, just sneak down and throw up a, um, a force field. And, oh, look at the scan revealing absolutely everything that's in his main base. He does see the robotics bay go down. And he is researching that gravatic drive, boosting the warp prism speed. He has the observer coming up as well, getting yet another stalker to make sure he doesn't lose to any aggression. And in Cthon Luck's base, Cthon Luck now throwing down a factory real fast here, making sure he can get a starport up to deal with any sort of aggression. But already that command center is up. Cthon Luck slowly pulling ahead thanks to economy, but it's all going to come down to how well he can deal with this Colossus harass, which is super unorthodox, and Little One is great at it. Yeah, looking back at the nexus of the little one, he is about at fifth. Okay, there he goes, using that chrono boost. I'm wondering why he hasn't chrono boosted this uh, gravitic drive. And wow, the gra he's actually not getting the thermal lance upgrade. He's getting the, uh, is that the shuttle upgrade speed? Yes, speed upgrade for War Prism, man. He wants to really harass his opponent, man. He wants uh, to snap some X today. <laughs> so I guess you really don't need the, uh, the, the thermal lance upgrade if you're just going to be dropping directly in the middle of all the PL lines. <laughs> yeah. Wow, we... Some great play there by Cthonlock, actually scanning his base as soon as he saw that observer. Really, really, uh, I guess, strengthening the point that he is completely involved in this game and really, really paying some... Wow, I can't even speak right now. He speak, he's uh, really paying he's attention. Good. <laughs> yeah, that's all you got to say, I guess, Ultra that he's focused, really good. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, being able to take one of those ripples and just immediately throwing down a... Uh, throwing down a scan to try to kill it off. Incredibly good play. I mean, a lot of players even save up for EMPs and use their ghosts to eliminate those observers because they know the Protosses love skewing their tech way far in one direction or the other based upon what they're seeing. But it's going to be a little bit dangerous right now for the little one. He is moving in here with this warp prism, dodging around those Zelnaga watchtowers in the middle. But unfortunately, the starport is done. We do see the um, it's transferring to the reactor, so he needs to do some damage fast or else he'll just lose this warp prism no contest at all. Now there's the Colossus, of course, dropping. Let's see how many kills it gets. It's only got one kill right now. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the little one micros this. It uh, looks like it took all of its shields right now, or, uh, right there. And uh, it's using that, he dropped it down for a little bit. I guess he was trying to get an extra pot shot there on those units. And now he does see this natural expansion of Kathomluck. He is going to be able to possibly get a couple of more SCVs. He's gotten three kills right now. I don't even know if that concussive shell hit right there from that Marauder. <laughs> that was some great play. But look at those Marines just... Those, that War Prism has so little shields right now because of uh, those Marines just destroying it. And uh, the little one kind of has to be on the uh, on the defensive here as well. He's trying to get a little bit more shots and needs to pick it up rather quickly. Oh, oh and then we see these two Vikings come out, and there goes the Colossus and the War Prism. Cthon Luck not phased by any of this uh, play from the little one right now. It looks like he was researching Stim in the meantime, so he's getting ready for a big counter push. The little one hasn't actually made any more Colossi. Very smart play. A lot of players fall into that trap. They want to do some Colossi drop, some Colossi harassment. But they just decide that, well, since I have the Robo Bay, I may as well only make Colossi for the rest of the game. And they spend all their money on Colossi with one robotics facility and one gateway as they get their expansion up. And then they become ultra vulnerable to Vikings. But as we see in uh, the Little One's base, he's chrono boosting all his gateways. He almost has Warp Gate finished. He's getting a Twilight Council for Blink and Zell Leg Speed upgrade. So very nice transition to this mass ground gateway army as he also gets his Nexus finished at his expo. It looks like he does not have that Nexus at his expo, actually, uh, with the waypoint to the mineral lines. He, it's, I think it's the third game now that he's done that. So maybe he just hates rally points for some reason. Maybe he has something against them. But uh, we do see him now sending a couple of forces there. Is that SCV? Wow, actually, he's not going to kill it because oh. he's getting dropped in his base from these Vikings. It uh, looks like he's trying to stop it with uh, that stalker there. But wow, just Vikings taking so many kills. Looks like he got about, I want to say, five or six peons there as these stalkers mm -hmm. are now in his base. Are they going to finish that last one? Oh. And they do, so he is going to be losing two of those Vikings, but he killed enough probes that I think it might have been worth it. Yeah, I mean, and especially now that Thonluck sees that there really are not that many 
um, Colossi around, and that he can pretty much just go back to this mass marine marauder production. I think he's pretty much fine with the fact that he lost that those two Vikings. He did get to see that there are a lot of warp gates in the main. We now see that that Zealot leg speed is almost finished. Has to be a little bit careful though. Um, th these positions are so far away that even though he does have, look at this, five barracks with Tech Lab. Uh, the fifth one almost finishing. He's going to be able to do a massive push, but still those distances are very long. He needs to be very careful to get into good positioning. And look, already scouting around with these Vikings, making sure that these attack paths aren't being used by the little one, making sure that he can maybe even try to do a little bit of harassment at the expansion. And yeah, looking back in the main of the little one, he does now have four probes on that gas, so I guess he's trying to make up for lost time there. <laughs> but two <laughs> on the top? <laughs> yeah. So, the little one may be a little bit of a missed micro there, but uh, I guess he's just going to keep playing because obviously he doesn't notice. We do see a pylon now on the far right side of the map, so we might see some aggression coming from the little one here relatively soon as he is going to be warping, or is going to be able to warp in units now across the map. Yeah, and we do see that plus one upgrade is almost finished for uh, Cthonluck. Cthonluck scanning his own Marine Marauder army, trying to take out yet another Observer. If we go into the little one cam, he does have an Observer floating over those five barracks, so he knows exactly what's going on in his opponent's base. So we do see a Templar Archives up. He should be getting that Psionic Storm very soon. We don't see any more Colossi being constructed, just a very big High Templar Zealot army. And, oh, no, he warped in a bunch of High Templar, and he still hasn't gotten Storm yet, and he's low on gas. Oh, my goodness. That could be a huge blunder. No Storm in StarCraft 1 was, like, the most embarrassing way to die. And that hasn't really changed from StarCraft 2. The designers made sure to implement that one as well. So hopefully he doesn't get that good old 1998. Oh, goodness, I'm a dumbass feeling. <laughs> Oh, wow. So we do see a ton of Marauders now from Cthonluck. Uh, looking like he's going to be attacking here relatively soon. And we do see Medivacs, and there are those, Sean, you were wondering where those emblems were. There they are on the uh, Medivac, actually. Unless those are just new emblems for the Medic side. I haven't actually seen those before. So maybe I'm just making myself look like a dumbass right now. <laughs> but anyways, we do see a huge force of uh, Stalker, Zealot, and a couple of Templar. But like you said, he's going to be oh, in feedback. He can feed back the medevacs and remove all their energy. There they go. The medevacs are almost done. And oh, look at this huge push. It looks like he's going to be able to do some force fielding action, warping in more units. Oh, Cthon Luck just is going to get butchered in this alleyway if he's not careful. Tons more zealots streaming in. Stalker's getting a great concave blink. Oh, yes, tracking them down. There's going to be no way for these guys to retreat. All these marauders are doomed to fall. And it looks like great baiting by the little one. Uh-oh, blinking into the wrong spot. Ooh. Might just turn things around right now. He is going to be reinforcing his... Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Good a, a good game from the little one. I guess he saw that there were just too many marauders there to actually handle. And he does pause the game right before uh, right <laughs> before leaving. Cthon Lux says, nope, I'm going to have my forces kill all yours. And then he's going to leave the game as he does resume that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, do you think it was over there for the little one? He didn't really have too many forces. But I think he might have been able to pull that up. Or off, rather. Um, yeah, I think it's the fact that he, he just blinked all those stalkers directly into a huge force of marauders. I mean, if he'd held back a little bit, uh, been slightly more careful, perhaps he could have pulled through, but I mean, I don't blame him for trying to chase down those marauders. That seems like the clearly good play there. But the fact that he skewed his composition, like that last production cycle, he got so many stalkers so he could blink to chase those marauders that he didn't quite have enough zealots to be able to deal with that second wave. I think perhaps he should have stayed a little bit longer, but after you've been shaken up a little bit, you know, you're down 0-3, um, you know, your drop didn't go so well, I think there's nothing wrong with just leaving, taking a moment to sort of recuperate mentally and just try to go into strong in Game 4. All right, so yes, Game 4 will be coming up rather soon on Kulas Ravine with Cthonluck up 3-0 now over the little one. <laughs> 